I finally got a chance to check out Houston Beauty um, I, after I found out what channel it comes on and what time it comes on because I tried to catch I tried to play catch up and I couldn't find full episodes online I only found clips online so <clears throat> I'm going to recap what I learned from those clips and then go into the episode that just happened on Saturday I don't know what number episode it is, whether it's episode two, three, um, I have no clue. It seems like it probably is a, only an episode two or, or three, I don't think it's any later than that. Um, I hope not anyways. But what I learned from the clips that I could find online is that um, there's a girl named Queensley and she has a brother who has, I believe, multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy. I think it might be muscular dystrophy. But he is, um, he's uh, an invalid that can't uh, speak. So she has to help her mother with the bills around the house. And she's friends with Mia. And Mia is a transgender woman. And the show keeps showing her name as Mia slash Ryan. Which is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of disrespectful in a way. Um, even though Ryan is actually, can be used as a male's name or a female's name. Because I do know a female named Ryan. Shout out, Ryan. Um, but if Mia prefers to be called Mia, then freaking call her Mia. Jeez, I, I went to school with dudes that never answered to their first name. They, they want you to call them, you know, uh, TJ or something. And their their real name is like Anthony. It's like, what, what, where the hell did TJ come from? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, if you, could, if you could work with that, you can work with Mia. Get over it. Anyways, Mia comes out that she is working as an escort. Um, to make money, and then I found out that um, I saw this other clip, clip where Queensley gets into um, a verbal fight with some guy who is too damn over the top about himself, and then she gets rhino charged by some girl that I think he was doing her hair. I say I think because I don't know whether putting a stocking cap on someone and gluing short blonde tracks on it qualifies as doing hair. That's, I mean, I thought when people went to beauty school, they went, they had to learn how to actually work on people, like, do actual hair before they started gluing pieces in. I know that's a, that's a part of doing hair, but I thought they had to learn to do the hair that a person walks in the door with before all of that. But, and on top of it, the, the shade of blonde that he was, it was all kinds of, I don't want to think about it. It gives me a headache to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Um, I saw the clip with the, the retro wig show because most of those were wigs and not really hairstyles again. And that was a real good opportunity for them to learn how to do some retro hairstyles. And it would have been cute to watch them learn how to actually do finger waves and also call it by the right uh, decade because they said the 50s and finger waves were out way before the 50s. But who am I? Um, also, they had to... This, they had the 60s and the 70s kind of mixed as one. And there are some things that were carry over from the 60s to the 70s, but there, there was a lot more they could have done. But hey, they, I, I, maybe they threw it together that afternoon. If they did, good job for one afternoon. But that's what that was. Oh, and also the kid with the so-called mohawk. Now that was an opportunity to glue a track on. Why didn't she glue a track right here in the middle of his head? And then spray paint it up so it could really look like how mohawks looked in the 80s. Because nobody had a little faux hawk. When you saw somebody with a mohawk then, it was a full mohawk. Like, and the higher off the head, the better. And then if it was, you know, uh, different colored in your hair, like blue or purple or green, then it was even more of like, yeah, that's a mohawk. So anyways, that's what I learned from watching the clips online. So now let's get to the actual show that I finally got to catch on, I DVR'd it, so I didn't actually watch it on Saturday, I think I watched it Sunday or Monday. But um, they're in the classroom and they're getting instructed and I got distracted by this girl's blue eyeshadow because it was like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. And it was like blue, like this blue on top of her eyes. And that was actually the reason why I put on blue shadow to blue eyeshadow today. I actually wanted to prove it to prove to myself that it is possible to wear blue eyeshadow without it really looking that bad. So this is my effort at at, at the blue eyeshadow. 
I'm not a professional makeup artist. I didn't, I didn't go to cosmetology school, but I think I did a pretty damn good job for for me to not usually wear blue eyeshadow and just try it out. And it's a little bit sh uh, shimmery too, which is another thing that they tell you you can't do is you can't wear shimmery, shimmery makeup after age 21. Fuck that. Wear uh, wear shimmery stuff till the day I die. I'll probably have. As a matter of fact, if I if I decide that I want to be buried. I, you could use this as my living testament that I want sparkles on my fingernails before they put me in the ground. Hell, if I decide to get cremated, they should put sparkles on my fingernails before they put me in the oven. Now, um, where was I? Oh, they tell the students that someone high profile is going to come to Franklin and they're going to um, have a contest to see who will get to style their hair. And they're all trying to figure out who it might be. And, um... Grace shares some information about um, how her sister does makeup for Nene and Cynthia on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, if that's a makeup artist, I would love to meet because Nene's makeup is perfect. Like, 100% of the time, her makeup is perfect, as is Cynthia's. And Cynthia has even... Cynthia is a model. So this is the only reason why I don't give Cynthia's makeup as much credit as Nene, because Cynthia already has the bone structure that she's going to look good no matter what. She's going to... You could put, you know circus makeup on her she's gonna look amazing because she's she's Cynthia and she's got model bone structure whereas Nene Nene looks very average like she looks like any any woman that you would see walking down the street but what that makeup artist does to her makes her look like oh that's not just anybody that is Nene and that's what I give credit for man I want to be in I would love to be in a person's chair just once just to see what my face looked like done professionally. It would be really nice to see. Uh, maybe one day I'll pay somebody to do it. So, I noticed that they all have these big-ass Louis Vuitton knockoff bags, and I can't help but notice because they just, they don't even, they don't even look halfway real. They look, you can look at it and you can tell that it's not even real leather <laughs> by the way the light reflects off it. And then when they show the bag open, the inside of the bag doesn't even have the same inside that a regular Louis Vuitton bag has. And if you don't know what, what that is, you can look it up. Usually they have like a really soft, butter soft, almost, I think it's moleskin. It's a little bit lighter than this and has these little raised dots on it. And then if you really want to want to see if it's really real, you got to look for the serial number because if it doesn't have a serial number, then you know it's not it's not real. Not that that matters at all because I'll buy a knockoff in rent. I got I got a uh, Chanel bag somewhere around here that's not real Chanel. But they actually took the extra time to put a little fake um serial number in it. So I I hey, if you can get a good a, I'm sitting here discussing the craftsmanship of <laughs> bootleg bags. But they are not all created equal. There's good bootlegs and there's bad bootlegs. I mean, it is what it is. There's, you know, there's Nike sneakers and then there's sneakers that just say air on it. And there are. They literally say A-I-R, air. No swoosh, but it does say air on, on the sneakers. And, and some of the air sneakers are pretty cute. I have a pair and I got it because it has, it has all these bright colors on it. It's like... Um, black and pink and purple and blue. They kind of look like ice creams. If you remember ice creams, I don't know if those are still. Up. But anyways, what was I saying? Um, the Chanel, the bags. And then Grace gets upset because she has money problems, and they're sending. I guess it's in a student cafeteria. And she also has eyelash problems because those fake eyelashes are too much. They look like like those walking dolls. I don't know if anyone remembers having a, a plastic, they call it a walking doll because you're supposed to be able to move his arms and let it walk, but it's like a two foot tall doll. And when his eyes would close, the way the eyelashes look like a solid, just one solid plastic eyelash, even though they are separated, that's what her eyelashes look like. They look like the, the eyelashes on that doll. Um, Mia tries to comfort her about her money problems, and Queensley's trying to be comforted too. And Queensley feels her so much that she starts tearing up and crying herself over Grace's situation. Then we get to, to see Neil, who um, is a freshman, and he's styling a mannequin head. I don't really particularly care for the style that's on the mannequin, but at least he, he gets points for creativity. He's trying to do something that's different. And actually, his hairstyles, they kind of make me think of what... Uh, I forgot the people that they call it. The people from the Hunger Games that were like the wealthy people. Like what their hair might look like. 
I forgot what you call those people, but whatever they're called in the Hunger Games, the way their hair was, that's how Neil's mannequin head was looking. <clears throat> Corey and his crew are over there talking shit, and I hate when people sit there and talk crap and hate, especially if you're hating on someone who is a freshman. Why are you hating on a freshman? Clearly, he's not even, if you're not a freshman, he is a freshman, he's not, he's clearly not supposed to know as much as you. So why would you sit there and down him and say, oh, he doesn't know as much as me? Well, duh. You're, if you are not a freshman, you're supposed to know more than him. Why would you pat yourself on the back for that? It makes no sense. That's like, that's like a first grader looking down at kindergarten going, oh, he doesn't even know how to read yet. <laughs> like, you're in first grade, you're supposed to be learning how to read. A kindergartner may not, may not be reading yet. Some of them do read already, but... I don't know. I don't know what the hell Corey's problem is, but he's bugging me and I don't like him. But, um, must mean that he is threatened by Neil in some kind of way. Because I was listening, I mentioned this in another video, but I was listening to the interview between Howard Stern and Lady Gaga, and she said something that I really like. She said that if half the people love you and half the people hate you, then you know you're doing something right. Because if nobody hates you, then you're not doing anything right because you don't have something to be hated on for. You got to be good at something for people to even hate on you. So that's that. Then we get to see who the very important person is that they will be doing hair for. And they walk in the, the cutest little girls you ever want to see. They look like little, they were like adorable little little cherubs walk in. And uh, th this is the kicker. Um, they tell them, oh, these little girls are going to choose their favorite hairstyle. And so, of course, they are, you know, flabbergasted and appalled at this because one of the, one of the hairstyles that the little girls liked the best was this crazy hairstyle this girl did that she glued all these jewels on. And the little girls loved it. They loved the little, because they're little girls. Who, would, who wouldn't want jewels glued on their head when you're, when you're five years old? That makes perfect sense. Why can't I have jewels on my head? It's what you're supposed to do. And put a whole lot of blush on. I remember doing that when I was little. I, my idea of putting on makeup at five years old was to put blush <laughs> on both cheeks until it's red as, as a circus clown. And I, I'm done. I'm ready to go. I got my makeup on. Um, what else happens? Oh, they keep showing Corey, and he keep, his hat keeps changing. He has one hat that says, I style. Another one says, I chop. And he's talking about if he shows up, he's just going to take over, which... I read is just trying to sabotage somebody and he really should wear a hat that describes his personality and it should be I hate because that's what you do Corey you hate you're a hater you hate on people you're hateful and that's what your hat should say I hate uh, next scene Queensley is late and Miss J and the teachers are talking about all the students conduct because they have had to walk around and remind people to put their uniforms on to wear the appropriate shoes to school and to not be late so they are very upset with how the students are not respecting the rules of the school um, this sets off Queensley for some reason she has a whole diva moment and storms off and then Mia um, clocks them both out and tries to go calm her down and Mia even says to Miss J I'll go outside and try to calm her down and um, then some girl and I believe it's the little there's a red haired girl she's got like all burnt hair and she's always next to Corey making these little snide m remarks with him and she goes up and tells Miss J oh Queensley said F Miss J which I don't remember whether the camera caught her saying it because if she did say it, I'm, I'm sure the editors would have ran it back of her saying it as she's denying that she said it. So I, I don't know. I think that little girl just made it up because she's been hateful the whole time. Every time Corey has something snide to say, so does this little girl. And I think, I don't know what her problem is, but I don't, I don't like her or him. Um... <clears throat> Queensley goes out in the parking lot and makes matters worse by pretty much having a Natalie Nunn moment because she is yelling how, um, oh wait, no, Miss J's son went out there. That's what, that's what sparked it. Miss J's son goes out there and he's talking about my mama, mama, my mama, you called my mama, you cursed my mama, and I can't, I cannot take a grown man serious who refers to his mother as my mama. If you're a grown ass man, you say my mama, I can't take you seriously. That's what that is. Um, so this sparks the Natalie Nunn moment with Queensley where she's standing up and yelling out of the car that she's a star, that, um, oh, 
what else she said? She's too fabulous. I'm too fabulous and I'm a star. And I really was expecting her to say, I run LA and uh, I'm international, bitch. Which I really love that. I want an excuse. I want an excuse to be able to say, I'm international, bitch. Just for no reason. I should put that on a t-shirt. Well, international is kind of long, but yeah, that should be on a t-shirt. I'm international, bitch. Of course, anything, if you take any sentence, I had this uh, uh, conversation. Who was I talking to? Chris. Shout out to Chris. We were having a conversation, and we both agreed that any sentence, if you end it with the word bitch, it makes it better. Perfect example of that is, uh, what's the name from Breaking Bad? The young dude from Breaking Bad. Why well, can't I remember his name? Jesse. Bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just anything. You can say... You say anything. You you could be like, man, I'm really tight about this class, bitch. Just it fits and it feels good to say it, Mr. Me. Um. Oh yeah. So Miss J's son is yelling about um, Queensley. Get out of here. Um, get out of the, the grounds of my school. And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way because I'm like, when? Since when is this your school? Last time I checked, it was your mama. Your mama's school. Not your school. You better go find a, find a vocation other than just being up underneath your mama's tit all day. What else happened? Oh, Corey and the red-headed busybody, whatever her name is, comes out and that, that starts asking uh, Queensley what's wrong. And beware of those type of people, too. There's people who ask you what's wrong because they genuinely care and they want to try to help you. And there's people that ask you what's wrong because they just want to have something to talk about. That's what Corey and that redhead trick is. It are those are the type of people they are. They just want to have something to run back in and laugh at. They want to laugh at your misery. They don't want to. They don't want to ask you what's wrong because they care. They want to ask you what's wrong so they can have something to talk about and laugh about to make their own dull lives more enjoyable. Can't speak enjoyable. Uh, what else? Miss B comes out, and she's very com comforting to Grace, because Grace feels very alone since um, Queensley and Leaves and Maya, or Mia, sorry, Mia elects to leave with Queensley, and <clears throat> they were the two people that had Grace's back, so Grace feels very alone in the school. And I'm starting to see the division, because you can look at Grace, and you can look at Queensley, and you can look at Mia, and you can see that they are a little bit better put together, and that they do, they do literally look more glamorous than the other students. The other students look like, like, if I saw them, I would not let them do my hair. I would look at them like, you can't even do your hair. You want to do my hair? That's horrible. Um, what else happened? Oh yeah, I was thinking about when, um, what'd she say? Uh, it was either Grace, I can't remember whether it was Grace, Queensley. It was either Grace or Queensley that said that they judged her right off the bat when she came in. And that does, that does happen. People do that sometimes. It's, you, I don't know if you've ever had this, this situation, but if you've ever walked into a room and... You don't know anybody there, and the people look at you, and they start looking you up and down, doing all, doing all that, and sucking their teeth, and and muttering. That kind of muttering where you're like, I can't hear what they're saying, but I just got a feeling they're talking about me. That's that's probably what these two girls are describing. That's probably what they're what they're going through, and it's it's a shame that people have to act that way, because it's just I don't know it just shows how fucked up their character is, that they have to get together in a group and try to make other people outcasts in order to, to um, elevate their own, their selves. You should be elevating yourself based on your skills, based on your talents, based on, you know, having a, a good personality, not based on trying to put other people down or trying to, to dim other people's light. That's my, that's my feeling of it. Then we get to pageant day, and Corey is still irritating. And uh, we get to see a mother with, oh, she has blue hair. And you know how, if you watched my um, Black Ink <coughs> commentary, and you know how much I love Sassy's blue hair, 
you all automatically know that I will love this woman's hair because it's, I just wish I could have blue or purple hair. More, more like purple. I think purple would be a better color on me, but I would love to have that kind of hair if my hair would not break the hell off and, and you know, whatever. But, um, she is grilling Neil about her daughter's hairstyle. And she's, a, she's asking questions that anybody would ask, but Neil is taking it like, oh my God, I'm being grilled. But that's what happens. When people are very concerned about their hair or their child's hair, they're going to ask you questions. Um, oh, the funniest scene. When the lady is talking to Mia, Mia's, I think Mia was doing the little girl's makeup, and the lady says, well, we don't want her to look like a hooker. Cut to Mia. Baby, if you only knew. She actually, in case you didn't see this, Mia is actually an escort, and the lady just told the woman who happens to be an escort who's doing her daughter's makeup that she doesn't want her to look like a hooker. That was just, that was a beautiful moment. And uh, one little girl, her name was Trinity, during the, during the um, pageant, she cracked me up. This little girl came out. You know how in the pageants, they, they do the same, the same standard moves. They usually come out, and I don't get what this move is. The kiss the finger and point and kiss the finger and point. I don't know what that move is or why that's popular. They did that. But this one little girl, Trinity, I don't know why this little girl turned around and looked over her shoulder <laughs> and then fluttered her lashes like this. <laughs> I cracked the hell up. I don't know who the hell taught her to do that, but I, that, I was rolling. That was just too much. I was done. Um, she's the one that won, I believe. I think she won, and that was, whose makeup? Grace's makeup? I think Grace's hair and makeup. Yeah. And, of course, uh, sour puss-ass Corey sitting there rolling his eyes and being hateful, because that's what he does. Um... Mia starts to leave because she's feeling kind of down. At first, I thought she was down because she didn't win, or her pageant girl didn't win, but um, then it became apparent to me that she was down because um, Queensley wasn't there, and she would have rather been sitting in an audience next to Queensley rather than sitting next to Corey, and I don't fault her for that because I would rather be sitting next to anyone besides Corey. And um, so Miss J catches out in the hallway and talks to her about how she's family and how much she cares about her. And it was very touching. I also like how whenever um, Mia talks to Miss J, when she answers her, she's so polite when she says, you know, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I just think that's so polite, especially when you're talking to an old, a much older person. I think that's really nice. I didn't really grow up with that in the Northeast because we don't we don't tend to do that up north. But I notice in the South the children do that and the younger people do that to anyone that's I would say twenty years their senior or, or more. And I just think that's so nice. Um, what else happened? Oh yeah, Miss J was sitting in the kitchen talking to her sons about the whole situation, and one of them is wearing an eye chop shirt, and it just made me think they are they're really trying to make this eye chop I style I I would say I life but that belongs to Apple that whole thing happened just like a uh, DJ baby Bob whatever his name is DJ baby Bob <laughs> um, on uh, love and hip hop Atlanta remember the Thaha shirts yeah that worked too <laughs> um what they do need to work, they need to watch out for Apple though, because Apple will sue you for anything. This thing keeps turning around and it bothers me. This is the front. Stay in the front. Anyways, Apple will sue anything. Evidence of that is when they sued the city of New York for using the term the Big Apple. The, the Apple Company, the iPhone, iPad, MacBook, uh, PowerBook, Air or MacBook Air, all that, all that stuff there. They actually sued the city of New York to try to stop them from calling it the Big Apple. Now, if they'll do that, they'll come after your little I, I cut, I chop, I, what is the other one? I style, I hate. They'll come after that. You, know, but you better have some good lawyers. What else happened? Hmm. Oh yeah, they're talking. They're still talking about the whole situation. And then, oh, she calls Queensley at home while Queensley's trying to explain to her mother what happened. And I don't know why Miss J even believes that or her son, because 
someone came and told you that she said it, why do you automatically believe that person over her? Especially when you have a whole production crew there. I know we're supposed to pretend like we're looking at it in, in, in real time, in real life, and it's reality, but it is it's it is taped. So why not just go at, walk up to a producer? Hey, did she say that? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's against the rules, but that's what I would do. Well, so they'll, they'll see when they watch the program whether she's telling the truth or not. I hope they have a, reu a, a reunion show. That would be interesting to see. Um... What else? Oh, Queensley's mom kind of gets into her behind about it because Queensley's mom knows that she can get mouthy. And her mom advises her to get it together, stop being so mouthy, and just, you know, stop being so reactionary. And that's, that's pretty true, too, because if you are a very, action, very reactionary person and people can get to you very easily, that will always be a weakness. Because even if you're, you're chugging along and you're doing very well in your career... Any person that doesn't like you will just be like, well, let me throw something her way that's going to upset her. If I can upset her like that, I can throw her off her game. You don't want people to throw you off the game that easy. Believe me, it, it, it sucks. I'm speaking from a series. It happens. Sometimes you can't, you, you can't help it, but you live and you learn. And then what I've learned is you can't let other people throw you off your game because that's their intention. They want you to get distracted. They want you to, you know be off your game so they can try to improve their game. Don't let them do that. So, um, I think that's it for this episode. Next week, they... Queensley is back. She comes back to the classroom in that little red-headed busybody. I'm just, I'm going to learn her name. Otherwise, I'm going to give her a, a nasty nickname. But anyways, she doesn't like it, and she wants to run and go tell Corey something. I should just call her, um, Corey's little run, tell that minion until we learn her name name. Um, then also they show Mia taking a phone call and saying, I'll meet you outside. And then you see a big ass tractor trailer truck. And I'm like, did this chick just turn the beauty school into a truck stop host station? That's not cute. And why is there so much escorting going on during the day? I always thought that was like a nighttime profession. Maybe it's because... Like I said in a different video, I, I mentioned uh, HBO's Hookers at the Point and um, Pimps Up, Hose Down, if y'all remember those documentaries, because I was talking about what Duchess had on. You had to see the show. You, you will know what I'm talking about. She looked like a hooker. Anyways, I watching those programs, I always just assumed that that, that was a nighttime profession, so it's so odd to see in the middle of the daytime. I'm sure it happens in the middle of the daytime, but it just, it just struck me as odd. So, anyways, I think that's all the videos I have for reality shows this week, unless Bad Girls Club comes back. I think they're off for two weeks. Because I miss the Bad Girls, because they, they used to be the most ratchet thing on television before um, Thicker Than Water came out. But, that's neither here nor there. That's all I got to say. Bye-bye.